Hey guys, South Holston River Fly Shop. We're full on in the middle of our sulfur season. And today we're gonna be having some dry fly tips with Colby Kreitzer. He's gonna be teaching us about some different casts that we need to incorporate into our uh, dry fly fishing. And um, if you'd like to book your own float trip or wade trip, call the fly shop at 423-878-2822. Colby, tell me about what you're doing right here with your, your cast. Um, dry fly fishing, I really feel, the cast, I really feel like a reach cast like that, that places a pre-mend into the, into the program. It's probably about, other than really targeting one single fish, it's, my biggest personal tip. It's reach cast and focus on that rise. That is Show me your reach cast again and so I can um, completely get the whole thing on film to the layout. Sure. Just two of them. I false cast. Three, two, one. And I just gracefully kind of lift my rod or place my rod in an upstream angle. So you're kind of coming across your body. Yep, I'm just slowly pushing it up river. Okay. It's, it's not a very jerky movement, it's just a... So a reach cast is critical to your success on the South Holston River. How important is it to you? It's, it is, uh, I do it 95% of the time. Hey Colby, so we're out here in the middle of the sulfur hatch. Tell me, um, something somebody might be able to do to prepare for a trip out on the South Holston on high water or low water. Um, for um, throwing the, the appropriate cast. What's important? Well, that's a good thing to bring up. Um, you know, high water, low water, whatever you guys are going to come do, a little bit of practice can really, can really help your game. Um, personally, how, how I started out when I got into this is uh, I would go out in the yard and um, I got myself a little yarn. It, it doesn't need to be indicator yarn, whatever, you know, if the wife knits or now, whatever little piece of yarn you can find, maybe take you an old leader or just you know, 10 feet of mono or any, anything that you have handy so you can have a little bit of leader. Um, and you know, wherever you're comfortable, if you start out at 20 feet or 25 or you know, if you can go as far as 35, I'm casting probably, we're probably at 40. 40 feet right now, 45, um, you know, and if you start out where you're comfortable, um, get yourself a, a dinner plate or, you know, a cone or anything that can develop you a target, um, and try hitting that and place it down below you just like we're set up. We're, we're above and off to the side of the fish, it's usually how you're going to be set up on dry fly fish. Work on getting that reach cast in, and you know if if you go three, four, do it for three, four nights. You know maybe each night you move out. It, you don't have to move out 20 feet. Maybe you know five feet at a time. And if you started at you know 25 feet at the end of four nights, you know you're you're going to be casting 45, 50 feet, which is, in my opinion, a, a top of the line angler. Present to a fish 45, 50 feet away, you're, you're going to be successful. Um, Tell me about what you're trying to do in terms of setting up on these fish. Um, okay. In terms of, we see the fish rising. There they are. That's, I see that fish, and what these fish are going to do, they trim their pectoral side fins up, and they they drop down current. So that fish may have rose right there but most likely he's positioned six feet above that. So I'm gonna try and land my fly six to 10 feet above that fish and feed down into his lane. Um, hey Colby, so we're down here at the end of the hatch and um, tell me some things, some other things that you think are important for dry fly fishing. Okay, um, well we kind of already talked about um, picking my fish out. I'm, I'm very deliberate on that. If it, if it takes putting your rod down 
and spotting that fish and getting its location. That's what I'm going to do when I'm fishing. Um, another thing that's pretty important, I'm going to pick one of these fish out. I'm going to lead the fish. And, you know, I, I got a refusal there. He didn't eat me. But, you know, one drift through there every minute, you know, that's, that's pretty easy to, for him to refuse, you know, because he's coming up in a repetition. You know, he's, he's got a rhythm that he's riding. It's not as though he's actually refusing your fly, but he's just eating a natural instead. Right, right. Timing-wise, you're either before him or behind him. Um, so timing is important. Exactly. So what I do, I don't know how often he's rising. Um, there was a neat there. Um, you know, it's pretty impossible to sit there and count off how often he's rising and that type of thing. The only thing you can combat that with is constant casts over the same fish. Um, you know, one, one so cast over him every minute versus ten casts over that exact spot every minute. Now I could take and I, I could let these flies continue just, I could drift into my backing and keep them going, but I don't have anything spotted down there. It's blind fishing. What I want to do is I want to continue to stay on that fish. So once I feel like I'm past him, I'm going to pick up. I'm going to do my best to put it on the very exact same line. And I'm going to continue to do that until I either stick him or catch him. I gotcha. Right. Do you ever put fish on the reel, Kobe? Never. Just, I routinely, you can see how much line I have off. I mean, I have most of my fly line off. Um, and, uh, I, I feel like to fish dries, you, you know, you need, need to be fishing a lot of line. You know, you don't necessarily need to be able to cast. A lot of line. But you um, need to like be able to mend it down, feed it down that's, river. That's right, mending it and feeding it down. Um, you know, routinely I'll, I'll kind of, you know, I'll say I don't, I don't know if you guys could see that fish rise down there. Um, I'll tell guys to fish, you know, to one of these fish in here, and they, you know, they say, well, I can't make that cast. You don't need to. You know, all you have to do is see how far it is off the side of the boat. Make kind of a maybe 45 degrees down river, um, as far out as that fish is is rising, and then feed right down to them. And uh, I think you you need a lot of line out to do. So that. the best anglers don't need to be the best casters. They need to be able to mend the line into the business. That's right, mend the line into the business and uh, and feeding. I've always said since day one. If you can learn to feed line thoroughly and without moving your flies or your bobber, in reality, you probably don't even need to know how to cast because I could set up right here if I was dead above a fish and feed down to them, it takes casting completely out of the game. You know, you, and, and that's not just for boat fishing, that's wade fishing. The big thing is where you're set up on those fish, and you really could set up right above them and feed right down to them. Um, not not being right above them and not feeding, you know, you run into a point basically is if I made the cast like this and didn't feed, you're causing drag immediately because the line, the water is moving and we're not. The nature of the beast, and uh, it's, it's just it. Figuring out how to how to make those flies stay stationary and move with the water is, is it's really as simple as that. It's not simple, but <laughs> yeah, I struggle a lot with it myself. But you know, if you practice with it, it works.